Okay, this is February 8th, 2022 here in Kitchener, Ontario, Zone 5. And I'm in the middle of a bit of a job here and I thought, uh, I kind of wanted to just get it done, but I thought, well, since I'm in the middle of it, I've got all this stuff out, maybe I'll make a quick video. So what am I doing? I'm reorganizing my tools. I've got this collection here uh, sitting on my sofa, uh, various tool caddies and totes. Um, I've got one of these uh, bucket, bucket apron systems. And uh, so these are all empty. I've you know, spent yesterday emptying these all out and the contents are now all spread through my living room here. Um, I've kind of sorted things out, tried to get a sense of uh, exactly what I've got as far as tools and as far as cleaning products. So I'm, I'm trying to have a bit of a system here where I'm going to contain all my stuff in these uh, totes. There was a video, I set this up maybe in, in 2015 I set this up and there was a video by a guy, um, Urban Prepper I think it is, and he had a video about a uh, tactical cleaning caddy or something like that, tactical prepper cleaning caddy, I don't know, I'll link it in the description. But um, he had a, a husky tote and he put all his cleaning supplies in it and I, I saw that video and I thought, yeah that's great, I want to do that. But I don't want just one caddy for my cleaning supplies, I want one to pair with the upstairs bathroom, I want one to pair with the downstairs bathroom, and maybe even one in the basement with the laundry room. So uh, I made duplicates of everything for the cleaning supplies, and I also made duplicates of everything for my, um, I made some house kits. So here we can see I've got a whole bunch of uh, duplicate, everything's in doubles of all the tools in this section, and I'll go over it a little bit more in detail, but um, the idea was to have two identical kits, one upstairs, one downstairs, because I don't want to have to go hunting in the basement for my tools if I just want to put together a piece of furniture or uh, hang a painting or something like that. So the idea was to have two kits, identical stuff, um, just a basic uh, set of items, and then all my other tools kind of go in, a, in an overflow kit. And that can maybe be outside or in the garage. Um, I've also got yard tools. So I've done, um, here I've got uh, just, these are garden tools, this, uh, garden scissors. I've got this huge collection of garden shears. Most of these don't work. Um, these have just accumulated over the years. That one's brand new in its packaging. But, um, so I'm, you know, I'm just trying to review the stuff I've got and, uh, make a little bit more sense of it. I got this big collection of rubber mallets, a sledgehammer, so uh, you know some uh, some gloves, work gloves, ear protection, and so I'm just trying to review the stuff I've got, see if there's anything that I need to replenish or uh, to complete these kits. Um, but let's just talk really quickly about my my duplicate stuff that I'm going to do in my duplicate kit. So for, first of all I'm going to grab one of these totes here. Um, I think I'm going to go with, for the tools, now I had this, originally I had this split up where when I first set this up, again this was, you know, many years ago, seven years ago, and I've, I've enjoyed this system uh, the whole time, but the way I had originally set it up was I had, so I've got these small, these small bags with sort of the zipper closure on top, and compared to these open um, totes with just the carrying handle and there's no zipper closure, and I didn't know what was going to work better for tools and what was going to work better for cleaning products. So I had originally split it up where one set of cleaning products was in this uh, with the carrying handle. And, once, and then the other set of cleaning products was in this. And then I did the same thing with the tools. So I had a split between each type of bag and the exact same kit of either uh, you know, tools or cleaning products. And what I found is that the big tote is better for the cleaning products because you're going to have the big bottles um, it's sort of a lot of large volume of, uh, of liquid bottles and that just seems to work better with the large open um, wide tote versus this narrower one with the, uh, with the closure. Um, both, both of these worked fine for everything that I was going to put in them but I think this one's a little better for tools. So let's put this one over here with the, uh, with the dual kit and so I'm going to be able to make two of these, grab both of these. So I'll be able to make two kits in these, uh, in these Husky totes. And what goes in the kit? Well, we'll start at this end. I've got uh, drills. So just um, 
I like to go with this Ryobi system. Uh, these are cheap tools. The batteries are all interchangeable with all the tools. This is not super high-end stuff, but for around the house, it's good. You can see this, you know, these are old tools. I've been using them. Um, so I've got my electric drill, so one in each kit. Uh, I've got uh, drivers, so one for each kit, and drills, one for each kit. I think there's, there's some missing parts out of each of these, uh, these kits. Things just disappear over time but uh, they're mostly complete. Um, I've tried to co color coordinate everything because I'm on this Ryobi system and they've got everything with, uh, with this lime green. I've tried to match that or match the green tones if I could. Of course you can't always, so some of these colors are, you know, there's other colors in here, but I did try to go with the green for my uh, individual kits and I, I wish I could have found some kind of green tote, but the you know I went with the husky one whatever that was the the one I just I, I went and spent an afternoon uh, this was back in 2015 again I went and spent an afternoon at Home Depot I just looked you know wandered through the tools section and looked and saw you know what do I want what what looks good and this is what I settled on the husky I went with the Ryobi drill or the Ryobi uh, cordless tool system I've got all kinds of cordless tools with the Ryobi but um, for just for standardizing on one thing I think is the is the key. So pick your brand, pick, you know, DeWalt, Milwaukee, whatever you want to do. But I went with the Ryobi because it's cheap and it's decent stuff for just around the house. Um, so again, uh, you know, moving through this collection, some lighters, some notebooks. I've really not written anything in these notebooks other than to note that I put the thing together on February 1st, 2015. So just about seven years ago, I, I originally put this thing together and it served me well. A couple of these precision snips couple of these Gerber Crucial multi-tools. These are a uh, pretty nice multi-tool. Uh, so one for each kit. I've got these Pick Quick. Um, this is a really nice, most of these tools are kind of junky, you know, this is just the cheap stuff, but some of these are rather nice. The Pick Quick, I think, is a, is a pretty nice brand. I really love, now these, I gotta get some more of these because these tools always end up wandering out of the kit. So I, I, I reach for these all the time to do stuff and then they end up getting left in the, you know, in the kitchen cabinet or something like that. So I need to get more of these because I really love these pick quick tools. And I've got the Multique, which is the long, narrow one. That's their, their long, narrow. It's a six shooter. It's got particularly narrow bits. That's not a standard um, bit. And then this is the Stubby. It's a five shooter and it's got the, um, uh, it's just good for getting into, into tight spaces. I've got a couple of these, uh, you know, just lots of different sizes of hex keys. This is the SAE um, sizing. I've also got a Torx uh, set like that, duplicates, and I've got the uh, metric, uh, duplicate metric sets like that, and I keep those in a separate place. But the SAE ones seem to be the, uh, the most useful for everyday use, so those go in the kit where they're accessible. I've got some adjustable wrenches and some vice grips. These aren't particularly fra fancy, but they are the, uh, the Irwin vice grips, so those are some rather nicer tools. Um, just a couple of utility knives. These are just cheap. Um, you know, I think, the, you know, you bought these in a pack of, of three or something like that, so just some, uh, some snips, some smaller pliers, some quite long needle nose pl pliers, and then there's your mainstay uh, needle nose pliers. So these go kind of on the outside of the pack where I can easily grab them. I've got these Estwing hammers. This is a more lightweight. This is only the 16 ounce, uh, which I went for these, uh, you know, my picture hanging kit, uh, my furniture assembly kit. And these hammers have seen some use. These kits do end up getting dragged outside and I do work with them outside. I'm sure I've, you know, done all kinds of serious stuff with these hammers. Um, but anyway, the S-Wing hammer, I wanted to go with a high quality hammer. Don't get a crappy hammer. Get a decent hammer. I really like the S-Wing one. I really love that narrow uh, neck. I don't know what the names of the parts are. And I love the shallow uh, claw on it. And I don't know if you would call that a framing hammer. I think maybe you'd call that a framing hammer, or maybe a wrecking hammer. But that's the shape of head that I like. Um, I've got a couple of these levels, just these, these short 12-inch uh, levels, a couple of tape measures, some kitchen shears. Um, this, I went through, I've got all these 
just an assortment of miscellaneous screwdrivers. A lot of this stuff I inherited from my dad. This is not, most of this stuff is actually not my stuff. Um, lots of these little stubby uh, screwdrivers, mismatched screwdrivers. So I don't know what to do with those necessarily, but these ones, this, these are in kind of a, a paired set. And so I'm just gonna include those in the kits because sometimes you just wanna grab a thing and, and have easy access to it. I've got a couple of these little nest um, this has a, uh, a reversible bit on it, and so rather than have this stuff kick around just in bins, I'm going to put it in the mini sets because it's, it is just convenient sometimes to just grab one small tool. I've got a couple headlamps here, some safety goggles, and one of these is pretty scratched up and dinged up because I grabbed these goggles and, and went and worked outside with them, and the other one is absolutely perfect because I've never used it. A uh, couple of LED flashlights. I don't really like those for this kit. I'm going to try and get different ones, but I happen to have those in a pair as I'm just going through my tools here. So I have those in a pair. So they're part of the pair deployment here. And then I got a pair of multimeters. And I didn't go out and buy two multimeters. These just, you know, I've, I've acquired them. Since I've got two of them and they're identical, maybe I'll put them also in the, uh, in the little mini kits. And then some WD-40. To accompany the mini kits, I've got these little uh, tool bins. And just grab one of these. I generally try and keep uh, identical stuff in them. This is just for anything that overflows um, out, of the, out of the actual tote that I don't really want cluttering up the tote. But these little bins, they've just got, there's a small compartment on the top here where I've mostly got um, felt pads for um, putting on the bottom of furniture. And then just other miscellaneous, like just stuff that while you're working, you end up with little bits and pieces and parts. You don't know what to do with them. I just throw them in the lid up here, and then eventually I come around to it and, uh, and deal with it in some sensible way. And then on the interior of the case here, just a couple of pencils, some Sharpies. Um, this is a whole bunch of replacement bits. It looks like they're all Phillips. I don't know. That came with the drill. Um, so not, you know, might as well just keep it in here. Some extra blades for the utility knife. And then in here, more, uh, more felt pads, and as I said, those other, the Torx and the metric um, Allen key sets. A bunch of electrical tape. Mainly felt pads, because I find, uh, I highly recommend those felt pads for putting on all your furniture, all your items, anything that goes on a, on a surface. Very nice. So I got two of these kits, um, two of these little uh, toolboxes to go with the kit. So anyway, I'll, I'll deploy all of this into... I'll split these into uh, two identical kits, and one of these goes upstairs, one of them goes downstairs. I'm gonna do then all of these other overflow tools. I've sort of got, here's my big, my big S-wing hammer. I think that's, uh, I don't know what the weight is on that. It's not 16, it might be 20, might be 22, I don't know. Um, a lot of these are my dad's tools. A couple of these are interesting because he's got uh, somewhere on here, I think. Yeah, he's scratched his signature into them. Somewhere on here. Right there, Paul Dupuy. So that's a nice thing to find. Um, anyway, these tools will go into, I think, this tote. So that's going to be kind of my overflow tote for all the other um, small tools, which I've laid out on the floor here. And then I've just got other miscellaneous, you know, I've got all these uh, tiny uh, tape measures all mismatched. So I'll find a home for those. Um, stud finders, uh, just, you know, an old crappy staple gun versus kind of a newer, you know, not very high-end staple gun, but Anyway, these tools will go in the overflow tool tote. And then I've got all these cleaning supplies and also sort of in, in duplicate. So, um, you know, duplicate window cleaner, duplicate, uh, this is Tylex. In that original Urban Prepper video, he talks about getting custom little bottles so that they're smaller to fit in the tote. And I found a couple of, uh, a couple of these little bottles, which I thought were good. And I use those for the Tylex. But for the most part, I've, I've kind of abandoned the amount of fuss with that method, I don't want to transfer stuff into other bottles, so I just get, you know, I just get duplicate of the stuff I want and use that directly. I've got, uh, you know, Swiffer, um, Swiffer wands and then Swiffer pads. I've got some of these, um, 
you know, for, for each kit, I've got a uh, bristle brush, some of these Mr. Clean magic erasers. Goo Gone, super important. So I've got this under, sort of under every sink. I've got one in the kitchen. I'm going to have one in each of these totes. I've got one in the laundry room. Lots of Goo Gone. Um, all of, you know, various cloths. I've got some rolls of J cloths. You can launder J cloths. So these are all previously used laundered J cloths. Some of them are in very good condition. Some of them are a little bit more shabby. I've got a few here that are looking very, very shabby. These, um, these are laundered if, you know, it smells nice. It smells like laundry detergent, beautiful. But these, because they're in such kind of terrible condition, now these have probably been through the laundry, you know, three or four times by now. Um, these will just go outside and I'll use them in the garage and I'll use them to like clean the barbecue and stuff. But these other ones that are still pretty clean, I'll throw those in the kit and I'll just keep recycling these until they die before I take anything new off the roll. Bunch of garbage bags and just some other, uh, some other cleaning products that I've only got one off. And so what I'll use for the cleaning products, I've got this, as I mentioned before, I'm going to do two kits identical in this style of tote. And then I've got this much larger um, just bag. There's no compartments on the inside. There's a few on the outside. And I'm going to use that for the overflow stuff. So I'll probably, I'm going to get all this stuff sorted out. I'll come back and do a follow-up video on uh, where I ended up with everything in the, in the totes. And then I've got these last, uh, these last few items here is these buckets, this, uh, you know, bucket apron system. Which, which has all these compartments around the outside and also a few on the inside. How, the way I like to set this up, I like to spiral an extension cord into the bottom of the bucket. Uh, and then you've got just sort of a, a short length coming out where it can attach to the wall. And this, now this is all just a mess right now, but this should just freely pull, if you've got it spiraled in there nicely, the, the business end of the cord should just freely spool out the length you want and then you can spiral it, spiral it back in when you're done. So I like to set up my bucket. This is sort of my extension cord tool bucket. I will also use this for overflow tools. And this one's nice because it's got the, um, there's like the drill holster here. So this is a really nice setup to just take out into the yard where you need power. And uh, of course you can easily fill this with, you know, pencils and uh, screwdrivers and stuff. So I'm going to use that for part of my another part of my overflow tools. And then finally I've got this unit here, another bucket bucket apron, different brand. This is the, uh, what's the brand on this? Coonies. And this is, this will be for my outdoor. So dedicated outdoor and I'm gonna put all like, you know, my folding saws, my, um, my, little, uh, my little gardening knife, my, uh, my pruning shears. And again, just, uh, I'll, I'll put an extension cord in here um, just little little spades, little trowels, and probably also these, uh, you know, one of these mallets, probably also the sledgehammer will go in there, and, uh, you know, gardening gloves and stuff like that. So I'll come back when I've got everything sorted into its compartments, and, uh, oh, and then final thing here to mention is I'm building a Faraday cage for, uh, for disaster preparedness, so I've got this, um, cheap small garbage pail and then I've got just a kit of I've got a flashlight and a drill I've got a charger and two of my big batteries for those I've got a emergency uh, weather radio that's got like a solar light on it that's got a, a crank operated so you can charge it with a crank I've got a, a set of ham radios here this is the Retevis uh, RT5R ham radio and then I've got a couple of talk about radios. So a bit of a um, bit of an EMP proof or an EMP recovery kit here. And that'll all go into the uh, Faraday cage bin. This is not properly lined. In order to get good effectiveness with it, you need to line it somehow. So I still have to find some kind of material to uh, put a seal, a proper liner on the inside of the lid there. And maybe I'll link a, a video describing how to do that. Um, from this, the source that I'm following. But anyway, so Faraday cage, dual tool kits, dual cleaning kits, uh, overflow kits for all the other tools that don't go in the, uh, in the mini kits, and then a yard kit. So I'm going to get to work filling all those in, and we'll be back in another one. See you in the next one.